Good day everybody, thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to um, redo a presentation I gave recently about uh, Google Cardboard. Um, I won't be going over the entire presentation, mainly the demo, but I will give an introduction as well. So, what are we going to build in the demo? I've decided to twist the, the title and put a box in VR. Actually, it's this box. And it's actually a real box. I've, I've got it over here. Let's see if I can get it on the screen. Yes, that's my real box. And I've decided to put that in a VR model. So I started um, with an idea. Normally in a, a big model, I would, um, uh, well, do a bigger sketch or someone else make, make, make a sketch. But in this case, um, this is my sketch and the idea. I took the box and took some pictures from every side. And these pictures will be used as textures later on. But um, these pictures are all different angles. So we clean them up in Photoshop and just cut out the different sides of the boxes. Then I, uh, I model them. Then I added some materials and, and lighting. And then I bake the textures. Um, this way I get a nice optimization and everything that is used in the model, um, well, it will be pretty much uh, faster because I don't need any, uh, any lighting calculations anymore. And even the tough calculations like the, the little um, uh, red boxes and the sunlight and the shadows, um, I can just grab from the texture. So that's, that's nice and saves, uh, saves a lot of performance, which is um, not something you have plenty of on a mobile device. So um, this way you get a, a really photorealistic um, model with, with very little effort. So let's uh, switch over to Unity and, um, and put that box in VR. I already started Unity. I got a camera and a light. Now we don't need that uh, that light, so I'm going to remove that. So I end up with this little camera. Now I need to uh, to import the uh, the Google VR package. I already downloaded it, so I can just drop it into Unity. And it should open it up. I think it already has. Um, for now, I'm just going to import the whole thing. And wait for it to finish. There are a lot of scripts and prefabs in that um, in the package. Um, I won't be using many of them in a the demo, but there are some um, some scenes in there you can play with as well. So if you download it, you can try it yourself. Let's move this one aside. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so now I'm I'm going to add one script to my camera. Oh, and I just, just, let's, let's drop the prefab in here. That's enough. There are compile errors. It says, oh no, it's just, just, uh, just compiling after the, uh, after the import, I think. So what this does is enable uh, well, basically enable VR. So now when I run my scene, I should get two cameras, one for each eye. That's nice. Now to demonstrate what it does, I'm going to add a cube. 
Oh, there's a little cube in here. Oh, it shouldn't be nested there. So let's add another cube. So now we have two cubes. Let's move this one aside a little. So now when we look at this camera, you can see the two cubes. And what you can do is, uh, is run it. And by holding the Alt key on, on the keyboard and moving my mouse, I can uh, look around in VR. Now when I hold Control, my head tilts. So if you want to, uh, to try out different um, Different views in, inside your uh, your world. You can uh, we can use these keys. It's very handy. Now, when debugging, it might be useful to uh, uncheck this uh, VR mode enabled box. And this way, you can um, it, it it renders just one camera. And you can um, move around the same way as I uh, as showed before, but then with uh, not having all that, um, all the stuff actually on, on screen. So let's drop in the model. Let me go. I'm just going to drop it in the root over here. And I'm going to drop it in my scene. This is my. Uh, my little model. You can see the table with the shadow. And the camera starts outside of the model, so I'm going to move it in. Actually drop it uh, right over here. Move it up a little. So now when I run this, I should be standing inside the box. Now you might notice it's very dark. And that's because these uh, materials that are on the model are affected by lights. And since I don't have any lights in my scene, they're just uh, dark. Um, but I don't want these materials to be affected by lighting. So I'm going to go to the materials folder. As you can see, I got this diffuse lighting thing going on. So I don't want that. So I select all four of them. And as a shader, I'm going to select Unlit Texture. And this last one, these are for the red, um, the red squares. So I'm going to select the Unlit Color. I'm just going to render in red. So now when I run, I'll look at that. It seems light, and these boxes seem to be um, illuminating the walls, so that's great. Next thing, we want the camera to um, to move around. Now, a lot of VRs um, have controls. And there are some Bluetooth controls for uh, the program phones as well. But one thing I like to do in these very, very simple models is just... Um, no, I want this to be in a script folder. Create folder. Uh, what I want this to do is just move around without any uh, needed controls. So what I'm going to do is create a uh, script and that's my um, walk script and what it does is when you look down at a certain angle you start to move forward and when you look up you stop again so you can um, move around that way. So let's open it in Visual Studio. I'm going to clean this up. Yes. Now I need a public float. And this will be the angle with which you, um, you may look down. 
and I want this to be a range of uh, something between 0 and 90. I also want the, um, the speed of which you are walking. So we start at 3 and I want to range this as well from 0 to uh, say 10. I don't need to have there. I also want the script to be dependent um, on the character controller. Not the character info, character controller, yes. And we need to store this somewhere. So in here, let's move this out of the way. Let's keep the code nice and tidy. So um, this is the get component method. Now because of this um, required component attribute, um, this script cannot exist without um, having this, this character controller on the on the same game object. So I don't have to do any null checks because I know for sure this one is around. Then I have to check um, in which way we're looking. Since we're using the main camera, I can use the camera dot main property. I want to transform and the user angles dot x. Now when this x is greater than or equal to um, that angle. And, and I'm going to copy this. It has to be smaller than 90. <coughs> so we're looking down. Um, then we're going to move forward. So this character controller has a simple move function, which moves in the direction of the vector. Now, I want to move forward, and luckily there is an easy way to get that angle, and that's on this one. On the transform there is a forward angle, which always moves forward. Well, looks forward. Um, when I look down, the forward will be down in the ground, but since we're working with um, Collision, we're just going to slide uh, over the ground. Um, it's the easiest way to do this. And multiply that, that by the speed. So that's it. Now let's switch back to Unity and drop the script on the camera. Now I was to fast let's do it again it was compiling it should add that yes it should it should add the character controller automatically now i don't want the camera at the middle of the character controller so i'm going to move it around a bit i think it's okay around here and let's look at the front to put this just above the ground Now I need to add a um, collider to the floor because otherwise we would fall straight through. I also want to add a box collider on the table because I don't want to be able to walk through the table. And since we're busy with colliders, I'm going to add one to the box as well. So now we should be able to walk around. Let's save the scene just in case anything goes wrong. Scenes. Open it and save it. Let's call this main. Let's run it again and see what happens when we look down. Okay, we'll to look the other way. Look down and we should start to move. And when we look up, 
we stand still. Now, I think we're moving a bit too fast. So let's go over to the walk scripts and just dial this down. Let's uh, let's try it. Well, let's try this too. That's nice. There is one other thing I like to do. Um, and I know there are some scripts inside the um, SDK, but I just want to show you one way to do uh, a gaze. Um, I'm going to drop in three scripts. And I'm going to go over them. I'm also going to add a little cylinder. And this one is way, way, way too big. So I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to reset it to zero, zero. I'm going to scale it down. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.1. So it's kind, kind of like a hockey puck. And this will be my um, gaze target. And whenever I look at a certain object, this um, is going to show what I'm looking at. And if I look at certain objects, um, I want it to change color. So um, when I look at the, at the box, I want it to be yellow. And when I look anywhere else, I want it to be blue. So I'm going to create two materials. Uh, materials are over here. And this is um, off target. And I'm going to use that unlit color again. Off target is going to be blue. I'm going to duplicate this and going to say on target. And on target is going to be yellow. Let's pick a nice yellow. So these are the two materials we're going to use. Um, then first let's go over the scripts. Let's open them in Unity, uh, in C uh, Visual Studio. The gaze is the first, um, the first of the three. And this script will go on the uh, on that cylinder I just created. It has these two materials, uh, the on and the off materials. It also has a reference to the mesh renderer, which is required. So I can do the same thing. I can get it as a component and I don't have to do any null checks. And then every every frame I have to update that, um, that renderer. So I take the position of the camera and the direction in which it's looking. Then I'm going to cast a ray that's just like a little uh, line through my scene straight ahead uh, from the camera. And when it hits something, this ray cast function is going to return true with all the information um, it can get inside that hint info uh, object. In that case, I'm going to enable the mesh renderer which will show the target. I'm going to update the position. I'm going to update the rotation. Let's clean up this code since we're here. And I'm going to update the rotation to the normal of the object. So whenever I hit a side of the box or the table or whatever, the, um, the target will rotate and stay on top of that um, on the top of that face. Now gaze target I'm going to show in a second. And during my presentation I ran to, in, into a bug um, and I'm going to fix that bug um, in a few seconds. So let's go to that uh, gaze target 
and that's this very small class. It has one function, or one property field, and that's the action. And this is just for the communication between um, between the, the the gaze function, gaze class behavior, and the target. Now the target has another behavior. And this is about going to go onto the box. It has a required component, it's the gaze target. And what I want is that it just writes a message to the debug log whenever the act is called. So it's registering an anonymous function to that act action from the gaze target, this one. So now what I can do is look at a target. When I hit something and there is a gaze target on there, I'm going to say, okay, there is something interesting on that target. So we're showing it the on material. Otherwise we're showing it the off material. So this one will be yellow and this one will be blue. And if we don't hit anything with the ray, I'm going to disable the mesh, mesh so it's, it's gone. Now what I needed to do was go here and if there is a target I'm going to have to call that act method. So now let's add the scripts to the appropriate game objects. So the gaze goes onto the cylinder and I'm just going to drop one of these onto uh, the I think it was this one. Yes, on the box. Um, it has both scripts on there now. So, the gaze, uh, I have to add the materials onto the gaze script. So, the on material and the off material. And let's run and see what happens. Now, in this case, I'm not seeing anything. Now when I look down, I should hit the ground. Note that you don't have to look at the mouse because the gaze direction is right in the middle. So now it should be right near the mouse. And there is something wrong with the... Oh yeah. That's a bug as well. But I, have to, I can fix that very easily. The cylinder gets a capsule collider and because it has a collider it is the ray is hitting that collider so it's interfering with itself so that's why it's going to move all the way. That should be fixed now. So now there is a target and when I hit that box it should become yellow and blue. And inside the console there is that log message and it's running and running and running since I keep watching that box. There is one more thing I'm going to show you. Um, by switching to Android and build and run you can deploy your game to the Android and it'll work but you don't have to forget to turn this one back on and inside the player settings you have to um, on Android change this name so let's change this to source code um, VR demo so that should work um, and I think the minimum level should be four. four. So that's that. So now I, I should be able to deploy it to an Android, which will take some time, so I'm not going to do that right now. Um, one other th nice thing to know is that um, when you have a Samsung Gear, Gear VR, you can as well uh, drop this 
Um, the same model with pretty much the same settings to your uh, Samsung device and watch it in the gear. But you have to check this box, virtual reality support. And you have to um, add a key store. Plus a very uh, special uh, key file you can get from, um, I think it was Oculus. Um, and you have to drop it inside your scene. The exact notations and the exact description on how to do that um, is something I'm going to blog about very soon. Um, so please check out my blog. The details are below the video. And with that, I thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.